Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Unlearning Christianity, Unlearning Christian Homophobia. This is part 11 in our series, and I want to talk with you about 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. In this passage, Paul talks about certain people who aren't going to enter into the kingdom of God, and he uses two Greek words that are under question here, malakoi and arsenikotai. Malakoi means soft, generally thought of as the person who takes the passive role in this relationship. Arsenikotai means man bed, and it generally thought of as the person who takes the active role in this relationship. Christian homophobia will say, there you go, God is against homosexuality. J. Paul Sampley is a New Testament scholar and Greek historian, and he says that if you don't understand Greek history, you might think this is against homosexuality. But if you do know Greek history, you will know that Paul is talking about heterosexual men married to women who keep slave boys in their house as sex objects. This is not about two men or two women living in a same-sex committed relationship. This is about sex, slavery, and rape. So here's the question. What does 1 Corinthians 6, 9 teach about homosexual behavior? Now, according to this video, this is not about a loving, committed, same-sex relationship. Rather, it refers to exploitative homosexual sex like rape or sex slavery. To justify his claim, he cites how exploitative homosexual sex was being practiced in the Greco-Roman world. Well, he's right about one thing. This kind of behavior was happening in Paul's day. But how does this prove that that's what Paul is talking about? Well, it doesn't, and here's why. First, Paul uses the word arsnikoite, which he coined by combining two Greek words, arsen meaning male and koite meaning bed or lie with. So arsnikoite literally means men who lie with a male. Nothing in the word itself limits Paul's condemnation to just exploitative same-sex acts. Second, the word arsenikoite has an important background context. The Greek words arson and koite appear together in only two Greek Old Testament verses, Leviticus 18.22 and Leviticus 20.13. And these two verses seem to universally prohibit homosexual behavior, not just exploitive sex. Third, we should use Paul to help us interpret Paul. Paul knew about mutual, non-exploitive, same-sex relationships. How do we know? In Romans 1, in addition to describing lesbianism, which wasn't exploitative, Paul describes homosexuality as men burning in their passion for one another. Clearly, this isn't describing rape or sex slavery. In Making Sense of Sex, William Loder, who's probably the most prominent expert on ancient views of sexuality and is himself gay affirming, says nothing indicates that Paul is exempting some same-sex intercourse as acceptable. That's not hate or homophobia. That's just good hermeneutics.